and we are officially live, live, live. It is Monday, June 29th. That's June. We're halfway through the year. Uh, June 29th, 2015, we're having our Monday hangout talking about responsible travel and the like around the world. So I'm chatting for the very first time with Guillaume and Rosvan. So can you can you introduce yourselves? We'll start with Guillaume. Want to begin? William. Okay. Yeah, William. Guillaume Cromer. So based in Paris, um, consultant in consultant in sustainable tourism and especially on marketing stuff. Uh, in a company, the name is ID Tourism. So I will just show you my tick tick. Let's try to show you just my website. Can you see the website? Yes. We well, see it. ID Tourism. ID Tourism, yes. But the, we the website is just in French. There is a, an English flag, but it's not working. This is Google Translate, so it's not very useful. But um, I'm creating a new one in French, English, and Spanish. It will be available maybe in a, I don't know, at the end of the summer, maybe. And um, and we are supporting like uh, companies, destinations, operator. We are the representative of Travel Life for Tour Operator in France, so it's a uh, uh, certification for CSR uh, uh, of tour operator and uh, travel agencies. And I'm working also in another organization. This is ATD, Acteur du Tourisme Durable. This is uh, the main federation of uh, sustainable tourism, uh, main players in France working in this field. And I'm the, the chairman of this organization. And we are trying to uh, to give information about the news on sustainable tourism in France. So with some members and we are like one, 100 members in France, like destination to operator, um, lodging, providers, and everything. And this so website, that's my one second, one second. So the ATD website, who's the, who's the primary audience for that? Hmm? Who with is the, the primary audience? audience? Mm -hmm. We are more a B2B federation that we we want to to spread the good practices in sustainable tourism in France to the different members. And our objective is that the, the world sector will be better in sustainable in sustainability. Okay. Let me ask you a, a more a, a specific sure. question. Uh, all right, so the family were traveling to Brittany. Where do we go in Brittany? What? Where do Sorry. what do you recommend in Brittany? Brittany, sure. Brittany is very committed in sustainable tourism in France, because in Brittany you have like a specific website. The, the name is Voyager Responsable en Bretagne, and they are um, offering many information about sustainable tourism in Britain in Brittany. I mean, just. But I'm asking you specifically right now. Can yeah. You give me. Can you give me three people to visit? Three people, people or three places? No, no people. I want to meet French people. That's what you <laughs> sell in. Uh, over there, you can. Over there, you can contact the uh, regional committee of tourism, and uh, there is a person in charge of uh, sustainable tourism. The name is Caroline Heller, and she's very committed to this uh, business over there. Very, very smart girl, very interesting. Um, and after you have like um, uh, a camping, a campsite of us are very committed to sustainable tourism. The name is Camping de la Fontaine du Halat. And it's very committed. There are Green Globe, uh, Eco Label, uh, European Eco Label, and uh, Green Key. So they have the three label in France. Uh, very what do you do, what, wait, excuse me. What do you do when you meet people like myself who con who consider those certifications actually marks against the institution? I don't know because it's like it's, it's a green glow certified. Ooh, not that interesting <laughs> now. It's people inside institution. It's not institution. Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, well, well, great, and so happy to have you here, uh, Razvan. <laughs> can, can you introduce yourself? 
Yes, hello everyone. My name is Rosvan. I'm a uh, Romanian but living in Italy uh, currently. So I'm speaking with you from from Tuscany in Italy. I'm sure most of you know Tuscany. And no. um, let's not let's not jump to con to assumptions. <laughs> where is Tuscany? Where 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 are you? Where is Tuscany? Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so Tuscany for you Europe is like Las Vegas for for America. So everyone knows where Las Vegas is. <laughs> it is true. It is true. <laughs> okay. So uh, what happened here was that uh, last year I I met a guy on Facebook. Okay, and this might sound crazy on you. I, I didn't know that guy. I don't. I didn't know what is he up to. If he has family or not or anything. So I just you know. I liked the guy, and I invited him to spend his holiday at my house in Tuscany. You know, and he now wait, wait. You're, you say you're 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 a Romanian in Italy, and you're promoting tourism to Italy. Wait. No, nope, no, nope, I'm not. <laughs> I'm Romanian and promoting tourism and sustainable tourism in Romania. But uh, I live in Tuscany like uh, since uh, 2002. So, uh, but I'm I, I'm now preparing to get back in Romania. And the reason I, I'm doing that because uh, a crazy idea can come come in, in my head, and I'm now building a uh, resort that uh, will allow tourists from around the world to come and visit Romania to enjoy a lot of, uh, I think, attractive uh, activities and to discover Romania as in a way that they cannot discover in, uh, you know, it by visiting a website or, or talking to. To a tour guy or something, and um, what happened is that I I bought some traditional houses in 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 a, in a village in a north village, and I'm restoring uh, the the houses and everything, and my business model uh, that I think will shock the world is like you come here, you stay, you eat, you enjoy everything, and you pay what you think we deserve for our services. I mean, you know, the the visitor, the, the the traveler, the guest, he will be the only one to decide how much that vacation worked for him. Uh, uh, what was the name of this town again? Uh, the town. What, what, what I'm going to make this. Uh, the town is named Botoshani. And what do your Botoshani neighbors think of this? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I I think the same thing as as uh, all the rest. I mean, uh, every people that I spoke with, they said they said that I'm crazy, and they said that sooner or later I'm I'm going to be in back bankruptcy. So, uh, you know, <laughs> but I, I'm ready. I'm ready to take the risk, and I'm almost sure that it's not going to be uh, a failure. But I, I I'm much I'm like sure that it's going to be a success. I think it's a wonderful idea, and we are going to support you and your neighbors in Romania and, and Italy wholeheartedly. Yeah, well, um, you know, the, the the idea is like if you want to come over, you know, just take your family and come over and stay like a, a week or something, and I'm going to take you to visit the, the you know the, the the real gems of of the places and everything, and you're going to stay with us and you know participate in our day-to-day -day activities, eat our traditional food and everything. So, uh, but you know, this is like discovering Romania. In not only just going to to visit monuments and uh, things like this. It's discovering the real life in Romania. You know, so I think it, you know, it could be uh, you know an interesting uh, thing, an interesting uh, uh, point. You know, way of, of of traveling and 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 discovering new places and new cultures and new peoples. You know, and also one one of the one of the you know important part of this project is that w what we are building there we want to be self sustainable from from the zero of, uh, up 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 the, the maximum we can and we also have a small farm where we uh, grow our um, you know vegetables and animals and meat and everything so we also plan to offer everything from our organic farm so clients can really enjoy healthy food and and, and have a nice a nice vacation Again, awesome, Again, and that's just awesome a simple idea. idea. Uh, do you have any photos you might want to do share or share the screen share? Yes, let, let me now try to share my, my screen one second, now. One second, just, just look it up, and, and question, just a technical matter, folks. All right, for our viewers, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to use the Q&A app, and also we welcome your comments and related links on the Google Plus event page. 
Uh, Guillaume, I don't know if you have headphones, but we may be getting some feedback from your laptop. And Kirsten, are, are, is your microphone working or no? Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. You, you can, can hear, hear me okay. you just okay. fine. Okay, I know the it's a, it's on the iPad, so I'm kind of like my camera's in a weird place here. So. <laughs> no, the iPad is a new camera. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for uh, having me. That's great. I want to thank you very much for your the edits on the wiki. Uh, can you introduce oh, sure. yourself a bit? Oh, sure, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm Kirsten Lovett. I'm over here in Sarasota, Florida, uh, which is, for those of you, I don't know if you've been to Florida, we're kind of near Tampa on the west side of the state. Um, so we're near the Gulf of Mexico. Um, very good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the visuals there. And, I um, all the way. Yeah. And basically, um, I did a fair amount of traveling uh, three or four years ago uh, that kind of started my blogging, uh, WordPress blogging, uh, which uh, is called Now Moment Journey. And basically, two, the major trip that I took that kind of started, uh, quote unquote, my business, uh, as it were, uh, was to Peru in October 2011. And I went to uh, Cusco uh, for about 10 days and uh, that kind of spending some time with indigenous peoples there uh, as well as learning about the Caro, uh, the Caro people up in the Andes Mountains. And uh, that was a literally life-changing experience and kind of prompted me when I returned home to uh, start blogging as well as co uh, curating content about uh, indigenous peoples, climate change, um, sustainable travel, and I started learning, and actually Ron was one of the first people that I started uh, learning about through, because when I looked up, I just googled responsible travel and, and indigenous travel, and Ron was like the only person at the time, uh, and actually the Hyderabad, uh, am I saying that right? Am Hyderabad. Right? Hyderabad? I think I that was the first online Hyderabad. <laughs> that was the first online uh, conference that I actually saw, and it was quite revolutionary to, to be able to see these online events. Um, and that kind of prompted me to check out some other people. And really, there's only a handful of other people I can think of who aren't doing exactly what Ron's doing, but who come close to that. And they, some of them are in Europe, and some of them, are, you know. But most of them, just to give Ron some kudos, probably know him. <laughs> and so it's hard not to, uh, I guess that happens after, you know, so many years. But um, there are, I'm kind of getting off different subjects here, but responsible <laughs> tourism, to relate oh, it back boy. to what you guys are talking about, um, kind of envelops these various areas for me as well as, environment, climate change, land rights, indigenous issues, as well as local travel, uh, you know, local food, fair pricing for, for consumers, all of these things tend to kind of, they, they need to be connected, and a lot of times they aren't, and I'm sure all of you can appreciate that, um, that, that it needs to be talked about in a very holistic way, and it's hard to do. We, would have solved the problem by now, but so it's nice to be in on the conversation. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. <laughs> that, that 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 was a, a great introduction, and too bad it's Joyce Joyce Week is over. Otherwise, that could have been like the longest sentence without punctuation ever. In a I know. <laughs> no worries. Hey, this is a brainstorming session as much as anything. So thank you very much. Uh, yeah, this is a you know one of the ways I got in touch with you know, you know, many of you, if not all of you, is in the idea of connecting some of these official events with online, you know, digital social web conversations and, you know, basically being a stickler on that for the past 20 years, saying, what well, you know, how do we do this and, to what you know, how do we, you know, push the envelope? Um, wow, this is our, our most popular hangout ever, of course. Uh, Martin, can you introduce yourself? And great to see Evening you. everybody out late. You're never late when you arrive. I'm sorry. I, I, I have no excuse. I am a blogger and advocate for responsible tourism from a little town called Nisner on the south coast 
of the Western Cape province of South Africa, right down on the same parallel as Cape Town, about 400 kilometers, 500 kilometers. Now, wait a second, Cape. wait a second. So, one second. Let's show people here's the South Africa. No, no, that's the wrong country. No, no, that's South America. Oops, uh, yes. They look so much alike. Oops. Um, there we are. There you are. Yeah. Um, yeah, high tech all the way. And, and yeah. show, show us, Martin, how do you do nice one? Teach us. Nice one. Nice na. Nice na. Nice na is uh, spelled K N Y S N A. And uh, yeah, uh, oh God, I forgot. And you've got me off on the on the on the back foot. Uh, and it's a uh, we've made a pun out of that. Nice na in Afrikaans, which is our, one of our eleven official languages. Ne is a word that we use. To uh, to ask somebody's approval, like so you, you understand as you say ne. So nice ne, nice. I'm, I've forgotten the. There's supposed to be a, a hand signal. I can't remember it. Ron does it better than I do. I only live here. Um, I have a blog called This Tourism Week. www.thistourismweek.co.za. Uh, you won't be able to get on it, man, because we're repopulating it. We've just finished rebuilding the site. It will be live later this evening. And that site, uh, we discuss, uh, well, I discuss issues affecting incoming tourism to South Africa, Southern Africa in general, and I use the site, as I said, to advocate for responsible travel. Fantastic. Um, nice to meet you all. I don't know who you are, but I hope I'll find out during the conversation. Well, you know, <clears throat> we have a, a nice uh, cross-Atlantic chat here, and uh, it's, it, as I say, it really is a nice surprise to see how this kind of pulls together. Um, awesome. I've been in touch probably the longest. I'm going to guess, in, I'm going to guess with Guillaume. Um, we started conversing, what was it, 10 or 15 years ago? His is, uh, thing is muted. Can you unmute yourself? Hmm. Not sure what happened there. Uh, anyway, this is we're also getting a couple of first timers here at, as a video hangout. If you're not speaking, it does help if you can mute your own microphone. But after you're done muting, well, please uh, do unmute so we can uh, see you. Um, so I unmute you. Good question. I was, by the way, J July and uh, July fourteenth is Bastille Day, the best Bastille Day ever, since um, we also have the Pluto flyby on the very same day. And I was watching the uh, the astronomy folks have at their Pluto hangout, and they also had the problem again with the echoing and uh, the muting. They can again they can get a spacecraft to Pluto, but they're having problems with the hangout. Well, as, 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 Mar as Martin has taught me, and I love to say, Google does a terrible job integrating with itself. Yeah. And if you were talking from Pluto, you'd also take a while to be able to hang out. We're just hanging out. Uh, so, here, as I say, this week, the, the big topic for, for me and on Planeta is the World Heritage Meeting. And... I'm just wondering, are folks paying attention to the World Heritage Meeting in Bonn, Germany? Is a World Heritage Meeting? So, this is one of those topics I think it's kind of sensitive to discuss, but well worth kind of exploring in the idea that, you know, kudos to UNESCO, they are live streaming the whole event. Uh, there are program notes, but it's kind of, you know, just very, very, very old fashioned as you might expect from a from an institution of that uh, genre. Um, at the same point, what they're saying is so very important. You know, for those of us who care about the Grand Canyon, or the Great Barrier Reef, or the Monte Alban archaeological site, um, you know, this is where the important decisions are made. Uh, what we'll see in terms of new uh, additions to the inscription list, uh, to me, will, of course, surprise, surprise me. Um, and I think it's kind of with that interest that I'll watch on a, on a you know, for the curiosity level. But anyway, we're not paying attention to it, so let's talk about the encyclical. Anyone read it? <laughs> no, I 
Ron, what? It, I'm batting just, zero out of two? No one's reading the encyclopedia? Well, no, I, I didn't know about the Bonn uh, UNESCO conference until I saw your Twitter feed about it. I honestly didn't know about it. And, I, and I'm on the UNESCO. I, I get quite a few updates from them, so I just... I found out a little bit too late about it. Is it happening this week? Oh, you said? it's happening this week. Okay. okay. A, a I know they always have a I'm, channel. Okay. I'm a little confused. When does the encyclical happen? Because that's the Pope, isn't it? That is, that is the Pope, and that uh, was released a whole yeah. week ago. Oh, it happened a week ago? On the care for our common home. Okay. And, uh, you know, Martin, I, you know, I'll... I'll of course, you can find it on the wiki on the encyclical page, but my favorite word that's come out of it is rap rapidity. 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 And basically the fact that everything happens right now in the world and that's causing effects for, for, for uh, development and sustainability over time. It's rapidity. Well, poor old Tim, so Tim had a, uh, the, the Nobel laureate had a, a a terrible lesson in rapidity, rapidity this week. A man whose career is in tatters after making an inappropriate joke. Um, how much um, do we, how much credence do we give UNESCO? You know, here, right next door to us, at the uh, UNESCO has just two weeks ago declared a new biosphere reserve in our area, a forest cluster biosphere reserve, of which the town of Mossel Bay is the largest town. There are 650 odd biospheres around the world, and I think only about three people who understand what a biosphere is. And I think heritage is suffering from the same problem as responsible travel. Our language is all wrong. People's eyes glare over when we talk about the need to preserve the Grand Canyon or the Harris class to biosphere reserve because they don't understand it. We, we're approaching it wrong. I can't get my finger on it, but we're approaching it wrong. What do the other speakers think? Comments? Guillaume? I've struggled. Oh, sorry. Guillaume? Oh, what happened here? Oh, um. man. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I was doing, I'm, I'm doing several things in the same time, so it's, it's complicated for me. So I'm hearing just from one here, but I'm here. <laughs> I will try to comment uh, just in a few minutes. For <laughs> no, that's all right. If you were, uh, are you paying any, any attention to world heritage issues, and how are you putting this into context? His microphone's going in. Razan? Oh, I, I missed this uh, this event, so... Okay. Razan, do, do people pay attention to quote-unquote world heritage or biodiversity in Romania? Oh, this, this is a tough question, you know. <laughs> I'd say not as much as, as they should. Yeah, I, I think this is the right answer. Not as much as they should. You know, maybe the, the thing the thing why, why this is is happening is is because Romania, although is 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 a, is a you know a country that is a, a member of the European Union and everything, and maybe for for the people outside Europe they expect you know it's maybe they expect like a country that is 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 an Euro European Union to see like you know uh, uh, every country uh, as an average you know the, the thing with Romania is. If you have, if you ever had the occasion, or maybe you'll have it in the future to visit this country, you notice that uh, what um, differentiates Romania from uh, from other countries is the fact that you can still find large areas of uncontaminated nature. But uh, wh wh when I see wh when I wh when I say large areas, I mean here like. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm not. I don't think I'm wrong saying like like 25 percent of, of the territory is uncontaminated nature and people in Romania or most of them are kind of used of you know used of with, 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 with uh, ecological and uh, with uh, uh, sustainable and uh, with all these things so maybe they don't pay 
enough attention what, what what's happening in in other parts of the world you know so i think this is the reason why why uh, people are not so pre preoccupied but, in, but you know, my question my question is kind of more focused on you know there's a there's a big world heritage meeting this week in germany yeah. and my and my big question is you know well one you know, do you, are you aware of the World Heritage Areas in Romania? Yes. And are there connections between, you know, those World Heritage Areas and this uh, UNESCO meeting? Because what Martin is saying in this recently declared biodiversity reserve, you know, to what degree are these uh, decisions kind of made on the ground, uh, site visit, mentioned in the newspaper, and that's it? You know, we're not necessarily connecting with the general public. And I think, wow, we really could and we really should this week. Okay, so uh, yes, I'm aware of, of uh, World Heritage sites in Romania. Actually, I, actually, the uh, our resort it, it lies nearby uh, one on one of these uh, sites in Romania, and I also included uh, a, a tour a tour visit uh, this place. Okay. For what I know, I don't know, uh, you know, in this moment, I don't know if there is any connection between the World Heritage Sites in Romania and what's happening in Germany this week. Yeah. I, I don't what, know. That's fine. I understand. And again, that, that's not a quiz. But what's the name of this uh, heritage site ne next near you? Okay. Uh, the Painted Monastery is from Bukovina. Okay. And then we're, we're going to come back to you. We're going to go to Guillaume. But if you have any pictures or a website to share, share with us, can you get that ready? And, yeah. and let's and uh, Kirsten, we're gonna come back to you in a, a bit. Uh, let's go over to Guillaume and if he's if we can hear him. Okay. Yes, sure, I'm here. Uh, I was looking about the World Heritage in France. <laughs> Good. And we have 39 oh. sites, like the very right one is. Very famous. It is the Mont Saint Michel. You, you know this. Mm. And th this one is very specific because uh, they decided to um, to recreate the, the 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 Mont Saint Michel like an island. So nowadays, um, the Mont Saint Michel is like an island because it's it's, it's a question about the the sand and everything. So nowadays, it's like this. And they decided to change the um, because before the, the the parking was the car parking was here, and finally they decide, decided to to put some shutter to manage the tourists and the the the, 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 the coming of the tourists. Small Saint Michel. Then so you have now like shutter like this. Uh, Very cool. I guess. So you have this kind of, of shuttle now, and the people they have to walk uh, like uh, I don't know 200 or 300 meters to go to the to the Mont Saint Michel and to the island. And this is really an example of of, of management of the, the tourism tourist flux, you know, to to to, to manage the, the number of tourists on the on the sites. So it's very interesting, uh, an interesting example of, uh, of responsible tourism in, in France about world heritage. Beautiful. That's a great example. And after, in France, you have also another um, uh, network of, uh, the name is Grand Site de France. This is, uh, this is our, like, a world heritage, a small world heritage network in France. And they are very committed to sustainable tourism, to try to to get just the good number of tourists on the sites, not to impact on the environment in the in the in, in the tourist sites. So it's very interesting also. Very interesting. Okay. Like, we'll so you have many this. <laughs> oh. I have a question for Guillaume. Uh, is the French population are, are people in France I've only visited France once, and I was very young. But obviously, I went to all the famous sites: uh, Notre Dame, uh, yeah. Versailles, and and people seem to be very aware of their history. Is it general generally accepted amongst the population of France the necessity to protect your your uh, cultural history and your natural history? 
is it, is yes. it, do, you to, do you have to fight a fight with the people to get them to understand the need for responsible tourism? Now, in, in France, more and more people are, are, are sensitive about the, the, the interest to, to, to preserve the nature and our cultural heritage and everything. Um, more and more we are speaking about sustainable tourism, responsible tourism, and the, 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 like the, the different uh, collectivities are very committed to try to have some, some management tools to, to try to find solutions to reduce the impacts of tourism on the, 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 the heritage in France. So the, the politics, but also the inhabitants in the countries that are really committed to, to protect the, 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 the places. Well, you're very lucky because in South Africa we've got the legislation, mm -hmm. but we don't have the buy-in of the population. Okay. They, they must be... You, you, you have to find a, an issue to, to make them proud of their... about their, their country and they, this, this place is... Uh, you know the French are very proud, so it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> but you would think that we would be, because I mean, places like Robben Island, the Robben Island Museum, which is where mm -hmm. Nelson Mandela was incarcerated for 27 oh. years. Everybody around the world knows that. Mm. But it is a, it's a nightmare, because okay. it's so badly managed. Because and people just in South Africa, a very very few people in South Africa have been there. And people don't, don't seem to see. And the, the significance of our transition to democracy was recognized in the rest of the world, but it isn't here. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's one of the sites that we have, uh, the historical cultural heritage sites that we have. I've been very frustrated, but, you know, let's see where it is. Well, again, I want to just jump on in and remind people, the viewers, if you have questions, please. To use, use our Q&A app, and to the viewers and to uh, our esteemed colleagues here, um, most of you are editors on the wiki, and you know if you have links that uh, you would like our viewers to watch, uh, to to consult. Excuse me, if our viewers will watch and consult. Um, you know, put it in. You know, put it into uh, the wiki. Uh, you can also put it onto the Google event page. <coughs> and, um, you know, we'll find ways of. We'll find ways of curating this, aggregating this, assembling this, you know, to maximum benefit. Um, you know, again, from my viewpoint, you know, you can't, you know, I love to travel. We all love to travel. And at the same point, there's a point where you can't travel um, or you're preparing for a travel or you're reminiscing about a travel. You know, you try to figure out the history of these places. You know, if I'm, you know, I say a lot of my work, uh, and Guillaume, I don't know if you know this yet, but... Uh, uh, so much of my work is based on a terrible trip to France, and it was 30 years ago. Um, there were so many wonderful things about it, and it certainly wasn't, uh, if I have problems with it, it certainly wasn't with the French uh, people or uh, family who organized the trip. Brother-in-law, by the way, is from Brittany. It was me. I hadn't adequately prepared, and I just figured that um, every trip after that, you know, I had just gotten you know more and more um, obsessive about learning things about places before I go. Because you can look at that UNESCO World Heritage page, you can look at the Wikipedia page, um, you can you know, see a video on YouTube or whatever. Once you are actually there, you know, it's a whole different experience. And, you know, I'm a strong believer in what used to be a wonderful phrase until NBC ruined it here in the U.S., that, you know, the more you know, the more you know. So, you know, you know, yay, we have the internet, we have the social web, we can inform ourselves and educate ourselves ahead of time. But, you know, being there, that, now that's a different experience. Um, I was, before we began, and uh, Martin, you'll love this, but Greg was trying to connect, and he was using uh, his mobile phone, his smartphone, the computer that takes pictures and videos, and show, showing me Nisna at sunset. Again, wow, think of the things we can do with technology in 2015. This is, you know, we're just scratching the surface here. One of my favorite pastimes is to put up 15 to 40 second videos on YouTube. Um, 
just, you know, here I am at this lodge or at that uh, shop or whatever, and this is this interesting story. And uh, I wish more people would do it because I think the people who have who have watched it have all said to me, well, you know, we, no, we know where you live. We know what you do. We know what it looks like. And that kind of, that that's what I think YouTube was built for. One of the things, obviously, um, you can share, and people, I reckon you could probably make a better decision about whether or not to come to Nisner if you've seen a few of those videos. You know, it's interesting. You're interesting. You know, it's interesting. You know, when you have one of these little devices, uh, it means the world. You know, the fact that you can take your, your uh, cell phone camera computer out and, yeah. you know, Vine, uh, Periscope, you know, the past two months I've been playing around with Periscope, and it is a lot of fun. And I think that's the, you know, the video has long been the new normal, but live video, you know, that's where, we're, that's where we are today. But how does that answer our, pro our, our basic question this evening of... of whether or not we are responding to the needs of of the, pres the, the, the heritage, the preservation of our heritage. I, I have a suggestion. What's your suggestion? That maybe those videos, in a way, reduce the pressure on those sites. Because... I know it's not the same as seeing the real thing, but there's no way in, the, in, in, in my lifetime I'm going to see everything I want to see. It does kind of give me a chance to weed out the places I don't want to go to. And by not going to the places I don't want to go to, perhaps I'm, I'm practicing responsible travel. I think you have something there. You, you know, here's an example. If you look at what Rosvan is doing in Romania, I think is at the cusp of something really, really great. And it depends on, again, that all of the social factors, the locals and the visitors having this mutually good time, and then there's a, there, there will be this economic compensation. But so much of this will depend on what is shown online. So that said, Razan, can you sh uh, share your screen and show us some of yeah. what you're doing? Yeah, so I, I will start showing you the, the, the um, United World Heritage site that is, it lies near our, our house, okay? So this is uh, one of our main tours that is, is going to, uh, to be. Let me, let me, okay. Uh, okay. Do you see my screen now? We see all of your screen, so we're seeing video. There we are. We see Village Life. Yay! Oh, Look okay. at this. Okay, so uh, as I told you, one, one of the... one of the, the, the So this this is the... Um, <coughs> this moment, as I told you, they were... Uh, the UNESCO decided in 1993 to include these eight monasteries from northern Moldavia in the UNESCO World Heritage. What is so special about this monastery? There is a short video on my website, so... Uh, if you can visit the monasteries, you can visit this UNESCO site just by, uh, uh, you know, clicking on, on this video. And what, what is uh, so exceptional about, about these monasteries is that they are um, um, more or less, actually more than 500 years old. And what's so important about, about these monasteries is that they are all painted outside and these frescoes are uh, also um, more than 500 years old, and what, what what's so important is these uh, frescoes represent the um, the humanity f since the birth till the till the death. Because what happened in Romania during the Ceausescu re regime, I'm sure all of you or most of you know the the the, the Ceausescu regime that was under communist until uh, 1989. So what happened that, was that Ceausescu actually um, did not allow anyone uh, to have, you know, to uh, to have, uh, I mean, I mean, to to practice uh, the Orthodox religion, and did not allow anyone to venerate God, and did not allow anyone 
to tell the story of humanity from a religious point of view. So what happened uh, then, we had these monasteries, but before that, we had the monasteries that they were painted with the history. And these are, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, how can I say, uh, the story told, uh, uh, used, uh, you know, told by, 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 by the frescoes that you can see on these monasteries. These are eight monasteries that you can visit. It, it takes you more or less one day to visit all of them. And also, this is uh, um, at this monastery. They are the monks that they uh, have uh, like a, uh, an organic farm. Also, what what, what they grow uh, vegetables and everything. And if you want, you can eat there what, what they prepare. And you, as you can see, also the landscapes uh, uh, behind this this monastery is, is very is not very quiet and very relaxing and everything. So it, it, it is a nice it, it, it's a nice place to visit and also a nice place to to you know to be there to see them with your own eyes. And uh, yeah, uh, what else I can say? Um, this this is one, so uh, our our place lies like uh, one hour with the car from from these amazing places. So just one hour with the car, you are there. You, you can visit the. One of, one of the uh, UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And uh, this monastery is also, well, uh, you know, the legend that, that uh, tells the, how, how these monasteries were built. Uh, it's also very, very uh, interesting as uh, these monasteries was, um, as you can see here, on, I, I put the years, okay? So this, this monastery was in 1360, this one is like 1317 and so on. So these monasteries, they were, all built by uh, kings and, and emperors that lived in, in those times as a reward for God helping them win the battles against the, the, uh, the Ottomans and other people, other people that wanted to, to, to conquer uh, those territories. And um, uh, what else can I, can I say about my project? Please. Can you uh, either click on the Facebook or the Twitter link and show us uh, how you're communicating with other folk? Uh, so you want, okay. So if, if you click on, uh, okay, so this is our uh, fan page on, on, on Facebook and also on Twitter. So th this is this is our, our uh, page on Twitter, travel, uh, actually it's at Village Life 2015. Fantastic. And do you have any videos okay. on YouTube or Google Plus page? Yes, I do have a video on 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 YouTube. Uh, okay, let, let me let me. And and again, we'll add the link and we'll you know tweet about this and let people know about this. And uh, again, you you and I can, we can yeah. you know okay. make that, make this. How do we support you? This is great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, actually, actually, today we launched a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo, and I can I can give you the link for that. And actually, show us, show us it. Oh, sorry. Show that to us, please. Oh, let, let Let me see how. And you have there the video also. Let me see how I can do that. So. Well, let's uh, not look at the video video itself right now. But I just want to know how to get there. Okay. I just share with you the, the, the link, okay, to the Indiegogo, and you have that the video I was uh, we presented, and also the story, okay, and I'm sure okay. you. One second, one second. We're just seeing your screen again. Can you uh, uh, kill the screen sharing? I I can try. <laughs> you just uh, just a click where there you are. Well, great to meet you. Um, so this is all brand new. Yeah, so this is all, so actually we, we, we did this investment last year in November. We bought two houses in the village and we are now working to restore them and, and, and creating, the, you know, uh, um, what we want to do, we don't want to build something new because no one cares about the new, the new things, okay? So what, what we want to preserve the traditions. We want to preserve how our, how our grandparents lived and we, we, we're now working to restore the houses and we are looking, we are, you know, traveling the villages nearby and we are looking to find old pieces of, of furniture, old pieces of everything that we used in Romania. And what we would like to do is to welcome people, uh, you know, that want to, to visit us in, in an authentic and traditional 
house and 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 the lifestyle. I I can say so. This is this is what we want to do, and I I I want to repeat it. And our guests will only pay what they can. There is no price. There is no fees. No no nothing. So you just come in, visit, enjoy everything that we have to offer, and at the end of your stay, you decide. Listen, I want to pay this. That's okay with us. Well, I look. I applaud your effort, and I'm really looking forward to uh, you know keeping an eye on that uh, Facebook and Twitter page in particular, just to see you know the experiences. I'll be a vicar you know, vicarious traveler here. Martin, go ahead. I um, one of my favorite books is uh, The Little Prince, uh, and I bought it at a coffee shop at a town called New Bethesda, which is in the heartland of South Africa in the Karoo, where he had no prices on his menu, but he had a big teapot on his, uh, on his fireplace, on, on the mantelpiece above his fireplace, and when you ate or drank anything, you put what you wanted to into his teapot. And he said he reckoned he made more money that way than by... But unfortunately, his prices were on his books. <laughs> so I had to <laughs> pass it over. But I want to ask you a question. Please. Um, there's a, there's a, a little project here in Neisner um, to preserve the traditions of village cricket. Do you know the game of cricket? Yeah, I do. Um, I wonder whether you would be interested in, in uh, getting in touch with the people who are running that, uh, that project. They have, they have uh, uh, built cricket fields and they, they, they do amazing work with the kids but village cricket as they run it here is basically for older guys played in the traditional white dress with the traditional rules of cricket uh, because cricket has become a very much more modern game in the in the professional era yeah. so I would be to put you together it'd be quite of interesting course. to oh, of yeah? course because, because every day you know uh, uh, while I'm going on on this project, every day I discover new things, and I even borrow things from other other th from other stories, from other legends, from other you know. So yeah. I, I, when I see something that I like and I I think I can use it to improve what I'm doing now, I for, for sure I, I want to 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 know that you know to know that to, to know that thing, and if I can, I I would like to also to to. To insert it in my project, so yes, for definitely, I've mean, been interested in knowing this paper. I'm in the process of nominating the founder for a uh, a sports development award for all the work that he's done with kids in uh, in sports uh, in very many different uh, 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 sporting codes. But uh, I'll definitely put the two of you together because I think you'll like yeah. what he has to say. For sure, I will. And speaking speaking about kids, uh, another thing that that we we are thinking at, and we, we we for sure we'll do this. Actually, we, we already put the basis. So what we want to do uh, in this moment, and I don't think we'll ever have a cash flow. So we we don't know our cash flow, okay? But um, what we want to do, ten up to fifteen percent of our of our of our profit, we would like to to um, to use ten percent or fifteen percent. To um, uh, to fund a, a scholarship for for kids that you know uh, have no possibility to go to school to 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 you know to have an education and we want it's also stated on our website uh, if if you visit our website there is the social in in our, in our menu so if you click on social on our menu you will see our story about how we want to. To, to help the kids from starting from our small community and you know who knows maybe one day we'll be able to to, to enlarge and, and, and support as many kids as, as possible because not only in Romania but all over the world you know as, and I, I love I love what, 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 what Nelson Mandela said Nelson Mandela once said that that uh, the most powerful weapon to change the world is education so I, I love those words and I you know fully agree with with those words. So we want to bring our contribution more than than just bringing, uh, uh, you know, people in our village to, to visit and, and to live, uh, you know, as our lifestyle. We will also want to make more than that, and we we want to support kids with that their families, you know, are, are, don't have the possibilities to 
to, to support them, to, to send them to school, and we want to, to build this and help those kids to, to have a proper education, and who knows, maybe those kids one day will really change the world. Bravo! That's great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, we haven't heard from Kir uh, Kirsten. Uh, Kirsten, help me out here uh, in a while. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I got knocked off there. Uh, it's a technical issue. Um, I guess a couple things came to mind. Uh, one of the reasons why I try to uh, tweet and share share uh, content about indigenous peoples, I guess, um, all over the world, but if, even if we think about the United States here, we should. Um, and we should, yeah. I, I think there's two, two groups of, of issues that I think of when I try to send out content, and one is, you know, sometimes if you tweet a story or share a story about, let's say, the Apache land grab or the Grand Canyon being developed, Sometimes that will communicate to people, whether they're travelers or just interested in heritage, uh, the, the sacred or spiritual significance of these places. They're not, buildings are important too, but these places like the Grand Canyon or, or mounds in Florida, we have burial mounds here that a lot of people don't even know about. Um, or archaeological sites that are maybe uh, organized by UNESCO. Uh, as uh, as our worldwide, if you can communicate the spiritual and the uh, and and the ceremonial and cultural significance of these places, it makes it a little more of a personalized uh, issue. Like let's say somebody out in Arizona is going to be able to go to these places a little bit with a little bit more of a personal experience, other than stepping out into their outdoors and saying, "Isn't that a pretty mountain?" You know. I mean, it's it's a little more deep than that. I think if people are connected a little more to their land, it it gives them an incentive to say, yeah, I I care about my heritage site within 20 miles of my house or 50 miles or or my you know local area. Um, there isn't a whole lot of that, I'd say, in the United States on a mass level. The closest thing I've seen as far as, for example, I just wanted to bring this up as an example, and I couldn't even believe this was in USA Today, but USA Today had an article, maybe some of you saw it in the last week, about the top 10 most endangered uh, sites in the U.S., and the Grand Canyon was among the top 10, but the rest of them, I think maybe there was one more Native American site, but the rest of them were all either buildings or neighborhoods, which are important, but like they they tended to be more on the uh, structural side, you know, brick and mortar. And uh, I'm not discounting that, but I I think there is two or three different levels to these heritage sites. We have the the ancient ones and the more recent, and you know, the intangibles as well. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, it's um, you know, in the United States. Uh, I'm going to, you know, right now you've been helping out as well. Uh, Deborah McLaren and I are hosting a, a summertime Northern Hemisphere Prejudice, of course, a summertime series on indigenous tourism in the United States. On, on, excuse me, we're having a conversation right now about responsible travel, local responsible travel in the United States. And, you know, Deborah and I could go back 20 years focusing on an indigenous tourism. And it's one of those things where in the United States, you know, we're we're not recognizing the indigenous heritage in our country to the degree that either that I'm happy with or the fact or the way that I think we can really maximize for mutual benefit um, the the knowledge gap. In other words, you're driving you're driving along these wonderful interstates we have, but you have no idea what the original names or the, the indigenous names of the mountains are. You don't know where to find, you know, indigenous-made crafts are at, at the recent educational technology conference, and that was a wonderful, wonderful event in Flagstaff, Arizona. You know, I was talking to teachers and 150 teachers and administrators from the Four Corners area. They're not in tourism, but you know, I went there basically to talk about the hangouts and, of course, the whole Planeta.com and Planeta Legacy. Saying, all right, you know, how do we want to educate people? 
what what uh, Kirsten's talking about in travel writing, we used to call the sidebar. You know, here's the inter here's the interesting tidbit of information besides the how do you go to a place and where do I spend the night. You know, it, and it's a question of again using the current technology we have to get up to speed on some of this. And again, you know, Twitter. You know, it's, it, it, again, Twitter is such a wonderful tool in which we can eavesdrop on people in a polite, you know, in a polite, you know, tourist-friendly way. Uh, you know, there's an oyster festival in Nizhna. You know, I'm sure this is a big, big deal. But I would have no access to it if it weren't for some of the tweets that are coming from South African friends. 35,000 people. Yeah, that's quite a big deal. In a small town, it almost... Uh, Increases our population by more than a third for ten days. Do you have, do you have parades where people wear kids dresses oysters? No. Nope. <laughs> you know the funny thing is that um, we don't even grow oysters in Nazna anymore. We don't farm them here anymore. <laughs> oh, it's a yeah, there are story all. Uh, but that's just an environmental thing. I mean, they were never meant to be farmed in the in the estuary, but they. They were for a while, and it damaged the well, they're not fine anymore. But we still we still celebrate the oyster. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, we're going to wrap this uh, conversation down. Uh, again, you know, our Monday hangouts are very kind of free flowing. Kind of, I want to introduce you. I want to meet you. I want you to introduce yourself to other people. Uh, what we find are the hangouts. Ah, they generate anywhere from fifty to one hundred and fifty views over the next week or two. Uh, so if you can, you know. Help us out by you know sharing the site or time stamping favorite bits uh, and just let people know about it. And again, if you're an editor on the wiki, uh, you know add some of these links directly to the wiki page and talk to me about where what fits. But uh, you know we're at a position, I'd say, in mid 2015, where again we have the video capability on phones that more and more of us have. So you know let's use that to the maximum benefit again for the locals and for the visitors. Can I make a point? If we're if we're, uh, if we're wrapping up, ladies and gentlemen, you're the first four people outside of outside of uh, me and my uh, 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 webmaster to see my new my new blog site. This tourismweek.coza. There you are. That's what it looks like. Is that your brother? Uh, yeah, that's my good-looking brother. Yeah. And can I just tell you? That that's what the old site looked like. We built that site in 2004. I've been blogging since then, um, and uh, we did a bit of messing around with the site, but that's what it looks now. Oh, scroll down. I think uh, the top, uh, the top story at the moment, tourism needs a new language. We touched on earlier. Yeah, there you go. And uh, I have been and. I've signed up for Village Life, <laughs> and uh, congratulations, beautiful website. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, just before we go, Ron, if I can, if I can just bring Kirsten's attention um, uh, to what's happening in Mossel Bay. I mentioned Mossel Bay earlier. Um, the STAC-P4 project, the South African Coast Paleo Climate, Paleo Environment, Paleo Ecology, and Paleo one other. Um, is a project that's headed up by a guy from uh, Arizona State, New State University by the name of Professor Curtis Marion. And they've discovered the oldest evidence for modern human behavior. Um, 162,000 years ago, the first use of ochre for paint, um, the first use of uh, uh, heat to improve the quality of stone and, uh, uh, and so on. Very important work because the um, uh, uh, genetic research has shown that we all, all people alive today, um, basically stem from a small core population of perhaps only a few hundred individuals who lived around that time, and it seems that they lived here. And if you would like to go to um, a site called musclebayart.co.za, M O S S E L. B-A-Y-A-R-T dot C-O dot Z-A. I'll put the, the link in. There is uh, uh, some information about that archaeology. And the point of human origins experience, which is the tour that 
uh, one of the archaeologists has built around that uh, is doubling in numbers every year, although they can only take 12 people at a time on the tour. It, I, think you would, I think you'll find it very uh, very interesting to, to read about. I'll put the link into the to we do right now. I will and check please, that out. Thank you. And please Thank add you. that to the Google event page. Kirsten, anything else you'd like to say before we wrap up? Uh, that's it. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, nice meeting everyone and seeing all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Razan? Uh, thank you, Os. It was a nice experience to, to be here today, and uh, I will sure uh, join you in the, in the next Hangouts. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, to our participants, if you can, just stay online, but we're going to wrap up the, the webcast broadcast here.